Today, we are talking about Howard Schultz, a man who transformed a simple beverage, coffee, into Starbucks. Empire valued $115 billion. We'll see his journey from childhood in Brooklyn to the helm of Starbucks. In this video, we'll delve into Howard Schultz's life story, his remarkable achievements, explore what makes him one of the most successful figures in global business. At the end of the video, we will see the seven lessons you can replicate immediately to reach your business goals. Early Life and Education Howard D. Schultz was born on July 19, 1953, into a working-class family living in the Canarsie Bayview Housing Projects in Brooklyn, New York. Schultz was the oldest of three children, raised by parents who worked hard with low-wage jobs to give a decent living to their children. His mother, Elaine, was a receptionist, and his father, Fred, held various jobs, including driving a cab and truck, before finally working as a cloth diaper delivery driver. His father injured his ankle while working. With no health insurance and the lack of a steady income, the family fell into economic hardship. This incident left an indelible mark on Schultz and shaped his belief in a company's responsibility towards its employees, a value he later embedded in Starbucks culture. With the permanent weight of poverty, Schultz understood the value of ambition and hard work at a tender age. Sports became an outlet for his energy and drive, and he was an avid athlete, particularly gifted in football. Thanks to his sporting prowess, he won a football scholarship to Northern Michigan University. He was the first in his family to attend college. At Northern Michigan University, Schultz found himself in unfamiliar territory. A working-class kid from Brooklyn, among the middle-class majority was a stark contrast that made him question his place in the world. After realizing that football was not his future, Schultz's interest gravitated towards communications. He saw the power of words and their potential to influence people and graduated in 1975 with a bachelor's degree in speech communications. Schultz's early years might seem inconsequential compared to the towering success he achieved later. However, the values of hard work, resilience, and ambition, which deeply rooted in his upbringing, would come to define his leadership style at Starbucks. These formative years were instrumental in shaping Schultz into the iconic entrepreneur we know today. Funding of Starbucks In the early 1980s, Howard worked as an appliance salesman for Hammerplast, the U.S. subsidiary of PI Partners, a Swedish kitchenware manufacturer. He noticed that he was selling a lot of coffee makers to a small enterprise in Seattle, Washington, known then as the Starbucks Coffee, Tea, and Spice Company, and decided to visit the owners of Starbucks. The company's original owners, Jerry Baldwin, Gordon Boker, and Zev Siegel, had founded Starbucks in 1971. The genesis of Schultz's story with Starbucks is a remarkable tale of intuition and determination. At the time, Starbucks was primarily a seller of whole bean coffees and did not brew coffee to sell. Their approach, which consisted of teaching the customers the art of coffee making, while they'd focused on selling coffee beans, made the store very popular. This approach and the enthusiasm impressed 29-year-old Howard, and he was literally begging for a job at Starbucks and bothering its director, Jerry Baldwin, with phone calls. Days later, Howard became the marketing and retail operations director at Starbucks and moved to Seattle. However, a pivotal trip to Milan in Italy in 1983 would soon change the trajectory of Schultz's life and the destiny of Starbucks. Italy and its vibrant cafe culture became a turning point in Schultz's understanding of what Starbucks could potentially offer beyond selling beans. He saw how Italian espresso bars were not only places where coffee was consumed, but were the pulse of Italy's social life, a place for conversation and community. This revelation birthed an ambitious vision in Schultz, one where he saw Starbucks transforming into a place offering a unique third-place experience between home and work for Americans. Schultz returned to the U.S. with the recipes for latte and cappuccino, which tripled Starbucks' earnings over the next year. But he was also full of ideas and presented his vision to the owners of Starbucks. Starbucks should shift from being only a coffee bean seller to also being a coffee drink seller and establish cozy coffee bars and offer American people socializing possibilities in places better than fast food restaurants, which were the most common places at the time. However, his dream of turning Starbucks into a chain of espresso bars did not resonate with them, leading to a divergence in paths. The founders believed that such an approach would cause their shop to lose its uniqueness. Not discouraged by this rejection and driven by his strong belief in his innovative concept, Schultz decided to embark on his own journey. In 1985, with the conviction of an entrepreneur and the zeal of a man on a mission, 
Schultz opened his own coffeehouse chain called Il Giornale, named after a popular Italian newspaper. The first Il Giornale coffee shop opened in Seattle was a great success, as 300 people visited it during its first working days. However, the journey of funding the Il Giornale chain was not easy. Funding a new business venture always comes with its fair share of challenges. Schultz needed to persuade investors to believe in his dream, a dream that did not yet exist in the physical world, but only in his mind. Convincing 242 investors to pour $1.6 million into his vision was no small accomplishment, but Schultz managed it through his sheer determination and powers of persuasion. Il Journal was a success and expanded quickly, and Schultz's dream began taking tangible shape. But the journey was far from over. In 1987, the original Starbucks was up for sale, and Schultz saw an opportunity. With the financial success of Il Journal, he raised enough capital to buy Starbucks for $3.8 million. It was a significant moment that marked the end of one journey and the start of another. Schultz merged Il Journal with Starbucks and became the CEO of the restructured company, marking the dawn of Starbucks' golden era. There was a bar counter in every single store where professional baristas, experts in coffee preparation, were grinding coffee beans, brewing coffee, and serving fresh coffee. A barista was supposed to know all regular customers by their names and also remember their preferences. This is the model on which Starbucks was built. Schultz also developed new innovative strategies to attract customers and set up the way people perceive Starbucks. His audacious vision, relentless pursuit of his dream, and strategic funding efforts form the cornerstone of the Starbucks we know today. Meanwhile, Howard Schultz never forgot the promise he made in childhood which was to bring everyone along if he found himself in a position where he could make a difference. He came up with a code of behavior for Starbucks, insisting on the benefits given by well-organized teamwork and the necessity of constant improvement of coffee quality. While developing Starbucks at the national level, he also focused on the human factor, which he called the most intelligent and far-sighted model of acting. In 1992, Schultz decided to make Starbucks a public company. In June of the same year, he put its shares on the New York Stock Exchange at a price of $17 per share. In just one day, the cost rise to $21.50. By the way, if you are interested in investing in the stock market, you can copy my investment portfolio, which has an average growth of 17.89% per year since 1998. You can copy-paste what I do, with less than an hour work per month, by clicking the first link in the description of this video. In 2000, Schultz stepped down from his executive position to remain only president. However, in 2008, faced with the unprecedented economic difficulties that suddenly hit Starbucks, he came back on board and took over the operational controls of the group. In order to save Starbucks, Schultz had to take a number of strict measures, from optimizing the costs of the company and closing 900 stores to implementing new strategies to secure new growth for Starbucks. Biggest failures, greatest successes. Every entrepreneurial journey is punctuated by peaks and troughs, and Schultz's journey is no exception. His voyage at the helm of Starbucks shows that the road to enduring success is often paved with failures. Yet it is through navigating these setbacks and leveraging them as learning experiences that Schultz imprinted Starbucks into the annals of corporate history. Schultz's most notable failure came with the launch of a high-end spin-off of Starbucks called Tavana. Schultz envisioned Tavana as an upscale tea bar aiming to do for tea what Starbucks had done for coffee. However, the concept failed to resonate with the public. Despite an ambitious start, Tavana incurred significant financial losses, leading to a write-down of $200 million. Despite this setback, Schultz's resilience shone through. He did not perceive this failure as a dead end but as a detour, a learning opportunity that could provide valuable insights. He acknowledged the misstep, adjusted the strategies, and remained focused on the Starbucks mission. On the other side, Schultz's greatest success undoubtedly lies in transforming Starbucks from a regional chain into a multinational conglomerate. He not only popularized cafe culture in the U.S., but also revolutionized the coffee industry worldwide. Under his leadership, Starbucks became a symbol of a third place between work and home for millions around the world, a concept entirely foreign to the coffee-drinking public before the 1990s. Schultz's vision extended beyond merely selling coffee. He embedded a unique culture into Starbucks, one that championed employee welfare and ethical sourcing of coffee beans. Under his stewardship, 
Starbucks became one of the first companies to offer shared benefits in health insurance to all its employees, including part-time workers. This was a revolutionary move, demonstrating that a company could be both profitable and provide for its employees' welfare. His success in turning Starbucks into a beloved brand is also reflected in the numbers. When Schultz returned as CEO in 2008, the company's market value was $15 billion. By the time he stepped down in 2017, Starbucks was worth nearly $84 billion. Today, with over 30,000 stores in more than 80 countries, the Starbucks logo, the two-tailed mermaid, is recognized around the world and valued at $115 billion. Personal Life For Howard Schultz, his personal life has been a source of strength, inspiration, and grounding, enabling him to navigate the roller coaster journey of steering Starbucks into a global brand. Schultz is a family man at heart. He has been married to Sherry Kirsch Schultz since 1982, and their bond has been a cornerstone of his stability amidst the highs and lows of his career. Together, they have two children, Jordan and Addison. His commitment to his family has never wavered, despite the pressing demands of his professional life. It's a proof of Schultz's belief in maintaining a balanced life, where success at work does not come at the expense of family time. Additionally, Schultz's personal life is marked by a love for sports. A childhood passion, sports have remained a constant throughout his life, and he became the part owner of the Seattle Mariners, a major league baseball team, and Seattle Supersonics, a basketball association. It's also worth noting that Schultz has shown interest in public service. Although he decided not to run in the end, he explored the possibility of a presidential campaign for the 2020 election. This interest in serving the public mirrors Schultz's lifelong commitment to being a force for positive change, be it in the world of business or beyond. Philanthropy Schultz's philanthropic ventures are an extension of his personal values and his commitment to giving back to society. Along with his wife, Sherry, he co-founded the Schultz Family Foundation in 1996. The foundation focuses on unlocking potential in populations facing temporary barriers to employment including veterans and young individuals disconnected from the world of work. This endeavor reflects Schultz's long-standing belief that everyone deserves a chance at success, a philosophy that has been a driving force behind Starbucks' employee-centric policies. In December 1994, Schultz received the Business Enterprise Trust Award for his integrity and philanthropy. Two years later, he won the International Humanitarian Award for developing an alliance between Starbucks and Sayari in support of people in coffee-producing countries. Lessons to Learn The life and career of Howard Schultz offer a wealth of lessons for investors, entrepreneurs, and businessmen. From his humble beginnings to his role in transforming Starbucks into a global brand, Schultz's journey is rich with insights that can guide others on their path to success. 1. Innovation and Vision Schultz reimagined coffee shops as social spots, a visionary idea that steered Starbucks to success. His journey underscores the importance of a compelling vision and exemplifies how innovative ideas, when coupled with astute business acumen and perseverance, can result in a business empire that can revolutionize an entire industry. 2. Embrace Failure Schultz's unsuccessful venture with Tavana underscores the inevitable nature of failure in business and underscores the importance of accurately gauging market demand and readiness. However, Schultz did not let this setback discourage him. Instead, he saw it as a learning experience. This resilience in the face of failure is a crucial lesson for every entrepreneur. 3. Value Your Employees Schultz made a groundbreaking move when he offered stock options and health insurance to all Starbucks employees, even part-timers. His firm belief in taking care of his employees has set a precedent for other companies. This approach emphasizes that businesses thrive when they invest in their most valuable asset, their employees. Four. Authenticity builds loyalty. Schultz's commitment to authenticity has helped forge a strong connection with both his employees and customers. His authentic leadership style has nurtured a loyal consumer base, demonstrating that genuine relationships can serve as a cornerstone for enduring business success. 5. Persistence pays off. Schultz faced numerous obstacles in his journey, from convincing investors to fund his vision to transforming Starbucks into a global brand yet he never gave up. His persistence serves as a reminder that perseverance in the face of adversity often separates the truly successful entrepreneurs from the rest. 6. Social responsibility is good business. 
Schultz's emphasis on ethical sourcing of coffee beans and his philanthropic ventures highlight his commitment to corporate social responsibility. This approach underlines the fact that businesses can be profitable while also making a positive impact on society. 7. Balance Work and Life Despite the pressures of running a global brand, Schultz has always prioritized his family. This balance between work and personal life is a lesson for all, illustrating that success in the business world should not come at the expense of personal relationships. From humble beginnings, Howard Schultz has risen to be an icon of entrepreneurship. His journey, filled with both triumphs and difficulties, has transformed a local coffee retailer into a global phenomenon. Schultz's success story illustrates the power of visionary leadership, corporate responsibility, and ability to learn from failures and persist to ultimately reach success. Don't forget to get a look at my portfolio if you want to have 10% more return each year on your investment than if you invested in the S&P 500 with a very low risk. I show you how to do that and copy-paste my personal portfolio in the link in the description of the video. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll love this incredible story too. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.